Looks like we're live. Hello and welcome everyone. Um, I'm sure some people will be slowly joining us. Um, I can't see you because we're in a virtual world, but it's exciting to be here with you. I am Michael Denon. I am the Vice Provost for Teaching and Learning and Dean of the Division of Undergraduate Education here at UCI, also a professor in physics and astronomy. I'm really glad that you've all decided to join us today. Excited for our, our session. We have some very talented representatives from our campus leadership. We're going to be talking about a lot of stuff for the fall and how we come back to campus. Um, obviously, the campus environment's evolving. Right now is kind of a tricky time. We're in that transition of a world where most people are not vaccinated to a world where most people will be vaccinated. And so that kind of makes feeling about this a bit anxious, perhaps, and, and a little bit of planning required. And so hopefully you'll come out of this session feeling a little more comfortable about where we're going. Um, we have three exciting panelists for you today. Uh, Liz Griffin, our Chief of Police. Um, Edgar Dormitorio, our Assistant Vice Chancellor and Chief of Staff and Student Affairs. And Connie Malone, our Director from Housing and Administrative Services. Um, you're, they're going to give you a brief little highlight from their area, and then we're going to go right into questions. So it is my pleasure to introduce our first speaker, uh, Chief of Police, Chief Griffin. Uh, Liz Griffin has been Chief of Police for UCI Police Department since May 2019. She came to UC Irvine from the Long Beach Police Department, where she uh, has served since 19, 19, I almost said 1922. That's really bad. Sorry, Liz. 1992. Um, <laughs> With 27 years of service, at UCI, she oversees a team of 45 officers and more than 60 public safety and professional staff who provide 24-7 safety and protection for the campus of our nearly 37,000 students and the medical center. She earned a bachelor's degree in criminal justice at California State University Fullerton and a master's in emergency services administration at California State Long Beach. She is a graduate of LAPD West Point Leadership Program and the FBI, FBI National Academy. So it's a great pleasure to w welcome L Liz to our virtual stage. Thank you so much. Uh, welcome anteaters and anteater families to the stay at homecoming anteater family weekend. I'm Liz Griffin, the chief of the UC Irvine's very own police department. And our mission is to serve in partnership with our community supporting a safe and inclusive university. UCI PD takes an educational approach to safety and we work closely with our campus partners on a variety of responses, resources, and resolutions to campus safety concerns. I want to review some important highlights of services that UCI PD offers that will allow you to enjoy a safe living and learning environment at the University of California, Irvine. And put your families at ease knowing that we have a unique police department that will help keep your anteater safe on and around the campus. Some of what we offer that may be of interest to you is our safety escort program, a safe alternative to walking alone available 24 seven at no charge to our anteater family. The service is most often provided by the community service officers who are uniform anteaters, our students that are equipped with radios that allow them to maintain constant communication with our police department. Community service officers are the trained eyes and ears for our police officers. We also offer services for students that include safety plans and welfare checks. And we have a SAFER program, which stands for Standing with Anteaters to Foster Engagement and Responsibility that was developed by housing directors and UCIPD to foster community safety and awareness. We have emergency, emergency blue light phones throughout the campus, which when activated, dial directly to our very own 911 Police Dispatch Emergency Communication Center for immediate assistance to support safety throughout the campus and housing areas. We have a text to 911 service that will go directly to our dispatchers when on campus. And a ZOT alert emergency system designed to quickly distribute timely alerts and safety information. Please be sure to sign up for the ZOT alerts. You can find the link on our webpage at www.police.uci.edu under the How Do I tab. The system is complemented by Zot Mail, used to transmit crime alerts and community advisory messages for certain crimes or incidents that are reported on or near the UCI campus. Our newly designed website also includes safety brochures and opportunities to learn more about UCI PD and safety on campus. It will also link you to our annual security and fire safety report under the Clery Act, 
that gives you access to accurate information about crimes committed on campus and campus security procedures. Other things we do is offer presentations on drugs and alcohol to various fraternities and sororities on campus. And we have a social media footprint where we offer crime prevention tips and safety awareness information. We also offer a community police academy for those that want to learn more about UCIPD and or other law enforcement in general. Please visit our website for additional services and information of your police department. This is also, there is also contact information and some important phone numbers and email addresses to the UCIPD team, including a direct line to me. I suggest everyone program our non-emergency phone number into their phones. The number is 949-824-5223. This can also be found on our website. UCIPD wants to wish you a happy and safe new school year. Remember to lock your apartments, rooms, and belongings. Always be aware of your surroundings and be safe. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Um, next up is Edgar Dormitorio, Assistant Vice Chancellor and Chief of Staff Student Affairs. Um, Edgar is the Chief of Staff for the Division of Student Affairs at the University of California, Irvine. And in this role, he's responsible for assisting the Vice Chancellor of Student Affairs in managing the division, which includes the areas of enrollment services, wellness, health, and counseling, auxiliary services, and student life and leadership. The Division of Student Affairs is the campus largest division is dedicated to supporting students well being and fostering their growth. So welcome to Edgar. Thanks, Dean Dan. And uh, I think you covered everything there for me. So um, maybe we'll, we'll go ahead and no, I'm just kidding. Well, we won't skip to the next person. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm incredibly delighted to be here with all of you and on behalf of Vice Chancellor Willie Banks, I want to send all of you a warm zot zot zot. Um, as Dean Denon mentioned, my name is Edgar Dormitorio, and I'm the Chief of Staff and Assistant Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs. I realize there's two chiefs here, Chief Griffin and myself, but Chief, Chief Griffin is uh, the real chief here. So um, I'll tell you more about what that means in terms of my role, uh, but I'm, I guess I'm here to tell you uh, what a great choice you've made as a family by selecting UCI and being part of our community. Uh, we're, of course, proud of your students and also the campus. Um, and, you know, it's worth reviewing, but I always like going over a few of these things. Uh, these are the things that we like to brag about the campus. You know about these because you've selected the campus. Uh, we're just 56 years young, right? Pretty good. For, we look pretty good for middle age. Um, we're consistently ranked as a top 10 public university in the country, top 50 university among publics and privates, consistently ranked top 10 as the Sierra Club's coolest school, which just means we're committed to sustainability in the environment. And this is my favorite one. Uh, we were, I don't know when this uh, this poll uh, took place, but we we're ranked nas 11th nationally for the stu for student happiness. And I have to think that's because we have the coolest mascot. So um, as chief of staff for student affairs, I help to manage the division of student affairs as Dean Denon mentioned. And, and we have to acknowledge that we are in a peculiar environment right now because a lot of our operations are uh, occurring remotely but we do have students who are living on campus. So if your students are in the residence hall, if before the pandemic they had a chance to visit the student center, if they're involved in a club or organization on campus, if they bought books, bought food, utilize our counseling services like in the counseling center or our student uh, health services in the student health center, they have been involved with a student affairs unit. I like to say that our, our division actually manages most of the out of the classroom experience by supporting the co-curricular development of your student in order to pr produce not only great students, but great leaders. Uh, I like to steal a saying from uh, my colleague and Dean of Students, uh, Ramin Talesh, uh, we make uh, great ant leaders here at UCI. Um, we pride ourselves on creating an ambiance that helps promote a culture of inclusion, innovation, excellence, and success. Again, I have to recognize what a difficult year it has been for our students, but they have demonstrated an incredible amount of resilience and perseverance. There is no doubt that the challenges this past year will impact our students going forward. Our hope is that we can use this moment to heal and propel our students as engaged leaders in the workforce and in their own communities. Because I think a lot of you will have questions of what fall will look like. Of course, everything is pending public health guidance at the time. You should know that we're preparing to have an in-person campus experience for fall 21 and 20, fall 21-22 academic year. So with that, uh, I'm going to turn it over uh, to Dean Denon. 
Thank you, Edgar. And our, our final panelist will introduce herself and make some remarks. That's Connie Malone, Director of Housing Administrative Services. Um, Connie has been with Student Housing since 2001. She is responsible for housing outreach, marketing, applications, and contracts, and the housing website, among other duties. Originally from the Boston area, her first student at UCI was as a PhD student in social ecology. She loves UC Irvine for its commitment to student success and spirit of innovation. Connie has found it to be very rewarding to see UCI develop into a top tier public university. So welcome Connie and thank you for being on the panel. Of you parents out there. Um, it has been a very interesting and challenging year for us, but we're um, getting through it. And as Edgar said, our students have shown a lot of resilience. Um, and looking ahead to the fall, we're looking forward to welcoming even more students back into our communities in fall 2021. Um, while we expect a continuation of many of the COVID-related precautions, we're hopeful that students joining us in the fall will have more opportunities to participate in campus life and programs offered in their housing community. Um, our housing communities, and there are uh, three undergrad housing communities, two res hall communities and a theme house community, are all staffed with a committed team of professional and student staff caring for the facilities and the needs of students, including live-on staff that are available 24-7. We offer a comprehensive living learning curriculum of activities designed to support student academic success, health and wellness, and offering opportunities for personal growth. Um, as I'm sure you've all heard this year, probably many of those opportunities have been online, but we're hopeful that in the fall, there'll be more in-person activities happening. As the conditions around COVID-19 improve, we expect public health guidelines will allow for a broader range of activities on campus and in our communities, and we'll continue to promote the recommended precautions for prevention. The campus is preparing for a variety of scenarios in the fall, um, and include that includes setting aside a number of spaces for quarantine and isolation should they be needed. Um, because of occupancy restrictions that we are working under, we're unable, unfortunately, to guarantee housing for fall 2021, but we will house as many students on campus as health regulations allow and do our best to assist students looking for housing off campus if they're faced with that. Um, and again, while we're, we're waiting for official approval from the campus, we're hoping to house you know, more than 11,000 undergrads in the fall in single and double room uh, configurations. Uh, the majority of continuing students um, next year will occupy furnished apartments in five different privately managed American campus communities on the East Campus. Um, an additional roughly 1,000 students, we're hopeful, will live in our our own UCI Arroyo Vista theme houses. And the residence halls, Mesa Court and Middle Earth, will house mostly first year freshmen. If space allows, we will also offer a limited number of residence hall contracts to continuing students. Um, housing offers uh, to continuing students will begin in March for the ACC apartments and in April or May for Arroyo Vista and the residence halls. Um, the housing applications um, have been open for continuing students. They are open now. Um, and students who have not yet applied are encouraged to do so soon. And then the housing applications for incoming students, freshmen and transfers open next week on March 1st. If your student is faced with looking for off-campus housing, they might want to start by looking on the Anteater Housing Network, which is a listing site for UCI students and campus affiliates. Students looking for roommates to share an apartment with can also post on this site. Um, and you can get there by going to the services tab on the UCI housing homepage. Um, there are also several apartment communities across the street from the campus and within a few miles along campus shuttle routes. Um, we will do all we can to support students in their uh, search for housing, whether it's on campus or off campus. And if you or your student has questions, the housing website is a good first start for looking for information. And if you want to speak to someone or contact someone, housing at uci.edu, sending an email is probably the, the most helpful first step. 
We also have contact phone numbers that are listed on our website if you wish to call us. And again, welcome to you all. Okay, so now we're into the uh, question and answer piece. Thank you everyone for your short introductions. Um, I'm gonna use my uh, moderator prerogative to make a quick statement on the only question we got ahead of time around teaching and courses. And then, cause that I think serves as a background for all the housing and safety questions. And then we can move into those for the panelists. I will also make a brief comment to, the, to all of you attending. Many of our answers will be depends, maybe, don't know. <laughs> um, and, and that's just where we are right now with the pandemic. But we'll try and give you as much information as possible. The most important thing is you now have four faces of names that you know where to reach out to as the situation evolves to get more information to get what you need. So a lot of information, but keep in mind, we all are living in this changing world and we're aware of that now. Real quickly, classes in the fall. Number one question I get asked, is it going to be in person or is it going to be online? And what I hope people understand is that question is actually not really the correct one anymore. If you think about where we were before the pandemic, I don't know how many people can remember that far back, instruction at higher ed was already changing and changing fairly rapidly to a really interesting mixture of online courses, what we called hybrid, which was some in person, some online, and then what you think of as traditional in person. So the students' experience was getting enriched by technology in many ways that were actually improving outcomes, improving student learning. Um, UCI has always been the leader in that in many ways, both in the research on how to deliver online well and actually executing it. And so as we come out of the pandemic, we're not going to slow down on that. So courses, whenever it is that the pandemic is, quote, over, if that's a point we hopefully reach, will always be a mix of in-person, online, technology enhanced, hybrid. The bottom line being students will need to come to campus because that's part of why you go to the university. It's a residential experience. There's a ton of learning that happens because you're in the same space as all the other students, not necessarily in class, you know, in studying in the library, in the dorm, going to faculty's office hours, research in a lab. It's why we are a on-campus, you know, community. Um, and that's a core part of it. The detail of any individual student's schedule is going to be depending on many, many factors. So there will be some online courses, but those will be ones that have been designed specifically and really are focused on that modality. So it's a tricky space. Hopefully that helps people understand and wrap their head around. We're coming back to campus is the way I like to talk about it, but any individual class could be all over the place. Um, so that's just to give you the groundwork. I think it would be nice maybe um, to go first some of the questions, probably, I think, maybe, Edgar, for you and Connie, a bit around housing. Um, and I want to start with the sort of current one around students who might be feeling isolation now, more things that the RAs can maybe do, things the student can reach out to and be engaged in um, around that sense of isolation I think many of us feel during the pandemic. So maybe, Edgar, you can start with the broader question of what students might be able to reach out and do at this moment in time, and then Connie talk a little bit about the housing piece. Yeah, I mean, it, it, there certainly is a challenge in the residence halls with uh, limitations in terms of activities. But, um, you know, we are still um, uh, uh, asking students to continue to be engaged with the residence halls. The RA should be making outreach to the residents. So if that's not happening, uh, maybe we can somehow get in contact uh, offline so that we can um, find out a little bit more. But we, we do want to encourage students to continue outdoor activities, um, uh, to uh, be able to um, take advantage of the campus. Uh, there's a lot less people on the campus now, so you can certainly do that. Uh, we do have uh, things like our Annie Deer Recreation Center that is also open. Um, there's limited use and you have to reserve time, but we're trying to do that uh, as safely as possible. So there are things that can be done. Um, uh, we have uh, events and activity. A lot of those taking are taking place online, so RAs are working hard uh, to put those together. Um, Connie, do you have uh, anything else to add? Yeah, I was just going done? to add that I think for any student who feels isolated and doesn't know what to do about it, if they even if they just send an email to housing at uci.edu and let us know where they live 
without revealing their identity, we could kind of channel that message back to the community and say, you know, it sounds like students in this hall are feeling isolated. Could the st pro staff check in with the RA to see what's being done or maybe encourage some additional activities? If they wanted more, um, more individual attention, there are a number of support resources available on campus. I know sometimes there are, there are weights for getting appointments with counselors and that kind of thing. But I would say like the, they should definitely reach out somehow. If there's a COVID specific question, we also have a COVID question email, a housing COVID question email that you can email. Um, and that, that email address is available on our website as well. It is a challenge and I, I, I do feel for students. It's been, a, it's been a tough year in many ways. Thank you. Um, uh, Chief Griffin, there is a question that came up um, also, I'm focusing initially on current ones, and we'll get to future ones in a moment. Um, concern about hate crimes against Asians and maybe the status with that. Do you have anything you can add in that in that space? I don't know yeah, if that's, something more specific or if that is good enough. That's a, that's a great question. Um, we do address hate crimes. But before I jump on that, I do want to go back to the original question that one of the services we do offer is welfare checks. So if you as a family are concerned about your student and you can't get a hold of them or you can't get all the RAs, uh, the police department will do welfare checks for you. So that's why I gave you that number. You can call us and, and we work with our campus partners with Edgar's group to make sure that resources are available and that they know about those resources. So just a little bit more on that question. And the questions of hate crimes, when uh, COVID first came out, we started to see a little bit of an increase on campus. We're not seeing really anything now, um, and that could be because there's not a lot of people on campus. Um, but when they do happen, we do address it as a community. We All leadership is highly in tune to that and is handling that. We've had some uh, hate incidents, not hate crimes, but hate incidents involving uh, other issues because of you know the politics and elections and things like that this past year that we don't usually see in other years um, and then we handle them accordingly and just like all other law enforcement agencies we have to report that to um, the federal agencies whenever we have hate crimes on campus. Thank you. You know one of the recurring themes in the question is the next year's experience for the current first year students. Um, so I'm going to combine a bunch of questions um, in, in the, you know, because of time and such, and we can all, I think, comment on this a little bit, but I think I'm aware everyone's sort of thinking about this carefully and planning in this space. Um, the questions range from very specific ones. My student's going to be a second year and they lived at home. Do they get any, you know, possibility or priority for the res hall to they, you know, they miss freshman welcome days to a, a whole set of different experiences. Um, I know, you know, in the Division of Undergraduate Education, which I oversee, you know, all of our units that work closely with students and provide various experiences are definitely developing specialized and focused programming for our second year students next year because we know there were things they missed out on the first year by being remote or living at home. Um, we can just go around. Edgar, you're next on my screen. We'll go baby Edgar, Connie, and Liz. If you have any comments on kind of this space of, first year students and their experience next year. Yes, yeah, certainly we're really mindful of that, Mike, uh, to, to make sure that our second year students who will be spending their first year on the campus um, have a, a feel of, of the first year experience. So uh, as far as our programming is concerned, we're, we're gonna make it a point to try to make sure that our, our, our students who are coming to the campus for the first time are getting an experience here. Um, again, this is sort of, it depends kind of scenario, right? Um, Traditionally, we have uh, programs like New Student Convocation uh, in the Brent Event Center and our Ant Eater uh, uh, Involvement Fair. Uh, we intend to have those again in the fall. There might be some limitations. I think we've been through this experience now with using um, Zoom and other sort of remote uh, tools like this. Uh, so it'll probably be a combination of both in-person and uh, remote access to these events and services and programs. And I'll, I'll just jump in and say, we're in ongoing discussions about housing priorities and how to prioritize um, housing offers for the fall. So I don't have a final answer on that, um, but I feel like the current year freshmen uh, certainly have a case to make for um, being given a chance to live on campus next year. Um, and I just, I'll, I spotted a question, I'll just quickly answer about 
um, a student who may have applied for spring housing this year. If anyone, we do have a few people still coming into housing for spring quarter. We do have spaces. They should hear within a week of when they complete their application. Thanks. Liz, did you have anything to add in that in that space? No, not really for, for housing. Yeah. Okay. The the other thing I think that we're we I'm seeing in the in the questions in the chat that's kind of one we can just take a quick um, answer to. Um, and Edgar, I know your group oversees counseling. None of us oversee financial aid, but it was mentioned sort of like when are staff going to be coming back on campus? And I love the phrase of the question. So you could talk to a real person. Um, you know, I, look, I'll make a general comment for the units I interact with. I, I oversee summer session. You know, last summer was a pretty unique time, right? We were reaching the peak of the pandemic. We were all in emergency mode. Everything was switching over. We were trying to use new modalities. Um, and I think it's safe to acknowledge that there were occasionally delays in getting back to people. I understand that. And that happened in a lot of places. Um, so now what I'm sort of thinking, we, we know we're gonna just be better at that, whether we're still remote or in person. Um, obviously we are planning to transition back to in person as the pandemic makes it safe. But that doesn't necessarily mean you and your students are going to be nearer at UCI. So now we've learned how to do the remote service as well. I'm fully expecting this summer, all of these units that were mentioned will be able to serve all of our students better from so many different dimensions. But I don't know, Edgar, if you want to comment on that too a little bit. No, I'm in agreement with you. And that's what our planning looks like going forward. Um, I, we will have in-person services available for students. That's the direction that we're giving our units. Uh, but like you said, I think we know how to do things better now. And actually the feedback we've been getting from our units is that the remote experience, um, while not ideal, has been reaching students who may have maybe don't have a desire to go in, into a physical space. Um, and so we think that overall, it's just sort of better to have both a combination of in-person and remote services. So uh, our plan is to have those in-person services available. It may be not to the same scale as we've had before because we certainly don't know what the public health situation will be at that time, but I think we're all uh, trying to remain optimistic of what that might look like. So hopefully we'll get to back to some semblance of old times. Thanks, Edgar. Um, I'm gonna, come back. I noticed that some people, because the audio was cutting out, missed my comments on, um, you know, kind of remote versus in-person instruction. Um, so I, I'm going to put that in my closing remarks at the end. So we kind of capture that at both sides. Um, there have been a number of questions in the vaccine space. Um, I don't know if that's more you, Edgar, or who's the right person to kind of answer that. Um, I think they fall into two categories. When will students be getting the vaccine? Are we going to require the vaccine? Um, what do we know about the vaccine? I know what I've heard, Edgar, but I'm going to let you get the first shot at it. Um, Liz and Connie, if you feel any information on vaccine, feel free to feel free to throw it out there. I'll, I'll try, Mike, but I might need your help. And I noticed that, you know, there are some PhDs here, but we don't have any MDs or public health folks, so they could probably do a better job of answering this. Uh, from what I, my understanding is that the current vaccines that are available are under uh, emergency use by the FDA. And so there's some difficulty in making that a man, mandatory requirement, although by fall, that could be the case. And so we're paying close attention to um, our, our capability of making that mandatory. Um, and I think, you know, we'll let folks know how that goes. Mike, do you have something better to add to that? <laughs> the other thing I would add to that, that's exactly right. That's what I've heard. Um, the other thing I do believe we're looking at is even if we can't make it mandatory, we can certainly understand who has it, you know, keeping privacy, keeping everything safe, but in terms of numbers and avail, you know, where we are from a public um, safety point of view. So we'll definitely be able to plan around that information. In terms of access, um, we're giving everybody the same, I think, message. Whatever opportunity you get to sign up for the vaccine through whatever mechanism you have, do it and get it don't necessarily wait for it to be available through UCI because we don't know when we're going to be in that process of getting the vaccines to give out. So if a student can get it through their parents' health insurance or some other mechanism opens up through the, the process, then take advantage of that. Um, that's, that's the number one advice that 
I'm getting and we're giving to people. And we expect there'll be a place in time where we will be vaccinating our students and having that option, but you just don't know where it'll be in the flow of what the state and the, the nation allows. Um, let's switch gears to a, a couple of housing ones. Um, one just popped up that somewhere, I think either Liz or Connie in your space, interesting question about whether ACC apartments are more prone to break-ins than others. And I'm gonna fold that in with one of the pre-questions we got. Um, for many parents, next year will be the first time their kids are going away to college, to a campus, being away from home. Um, you already had a lot of great stuff, Liz, I thought in your introduction, but maybe let's start with the specific question and then kind of move to what safety look like on campus? How should parents feel about, you know, their, their children being here um, away from home for that first time? Well, let me first start off by saying that the city of Irvine, which is where the campus is, is one of the safe cities and safest cities in Orange County in California, um, and even ranked pretty high in the nation. So I guess that right there will tell you how safe we are. But we do get some break-ins, and we do have, uh, I mean, we are attached to cities around us, so we get some people that come from uh, other areas, but we don't get a lot. It's a, it's a very low number. I, I couldn't say that ACC really gets hit more than any other place. They do have cameras and lighting and different things that, that are a little bit different than the housing. And I think sometimes that might affect uh, the opportunities. Um, most of those opportunities are, are uh, victim-based, right? They're looking for victims, people who aren't locking their doors, people who aren't, uh, you know, leaving stuff in their cars on the, on the front seat where it's easily accessible and easy to see. So what we do is we push uh, victims safety and we have brochures that talk about how not to be burglarized and how to keep your and you know at, at the end of my spill I mentioned you know stay safe and lock up your belongings and and we really to keep the community safe we really got to work together as a team uh, to ensure that we're doing everything we can to protect ourselves and our own uh, property but we do not get a lot of break-ins and and I can't say that one housing area is safer or not as safe as another one. Liz, Chief Griffin, I just wanted to add to that also is I think um, for folks to realize that um, uh, UCI um, probably has one of the largest uh, on-campus housing footprints compared to um, our sister campus, other UCs and uh, other campuses across the country. And so because we cover a lot of space, you know, I think there are, as you said, these opportunities for mostly folks from off campus that might be coming in. Uh, we are in the safest city, as Chief Griffin said, and, and uh, we just want to make sure to remind folks that even though we're in the safest city, students still need to be vigilant um, and need to make sure that they put their things away, they lock up their bikes, they do all the things that you're supposed to do. Um, and so uh, when they come onto campus, just to have that realization that we're a big campus, we have a lot of housing, and just continue to do things to protect your personal belongings. Great. Thank you all. Um, there's one here very quick shortly I'll, I'll just answer summer school billing question um i do apologize there, there's for many reasons summer session is just on a different system um, than the main campus but the campus is moving to getting summer session on the same system i you know i i hesitate to predict when that will be but it's going to be somewhere between one and five years um not COVID related it's just one of those things about um, bringing in new systems and updating things. So unfortunately for right now, it's, it's not um, a ZOD account thing that we can do. That's just a, a, a practical issue. Um, I'm gonna answer two things at once. There was a question about if a student refuses the vaccine, um, will there be an option to stay fully remote? And go back to my earlier comments about the next year. Um, you know, look, the pandemic may take a turn that surprises all of us and all of this planning can go out the window. But right now we're going to assume that we will be able to have students come on campus and require that they're there. And all instruction will be based around an assumption that we're an operating, you know, sort of physically on the same campus again. That being said, not all instruction will be traditionally in person, as I mentioned. Uh, even before the pandemic, UCI was a leader in, in hybrid courses, online courses, um, enhancing our instruction with technology. So what an individual student schedule will look like is going to be very diverse and really depends on the courses they're taking, the role they play, and the development faculty did. That being said, we recognize like the pandemic doesn't just turn off at some set date. You know, there are going to be a lot of valid reasons still for students in fall, winter, or spring um, to possibly require some remote 
accommodations. Just like any accommodation process, we will, as we start to understand what those are, as we get a handle on what the accommodations will be, we'll be communicating quickly and early with our students. Um, but as I said, we expect that to be the exception, not the norm, but our students are one of our priorities and we don't want anyone to be left behind at this point. So, you know, as with everything, um, there's what we plan to do for the bulk, if not all the students, but then we recognize not every student will fit nicely into every category. And I think that's safe to say, probably in every aspect of the campus, um, you know, in terms of all the services we provide. I don't know, Edgar, if you wanted to add anything to that, because I think they overlap a lot, the teaching and the services. No, I think you hit it on the head, Mike. Yeah. I, I would like to take, we're wrapping up in about, um, we're, we're, under, we're under the 10 minute mark. Um, so I've been ignoring for a moment all the questions around deadlines, <laughs> right? Because those are hard to, to, those are the hardest ones for our, us to nail down. Um, um, Connie or Edgar, would you, do you want to say anything on things like, you know, when might students really know about housing, when we might really know what's being guaranteed or not? Kind of, I know we don't have any of the real deadlines or dates nailed down yet, but anything we do know or anything we're sort of roughly planning, um, I will just say in the teaching space, unless something really weird happens during March and April, we hope to have a pretty clear schedule that we release in our normal time frame, which is May for students to kind of know what the schedule of classes look like. I, I can give a few um, timeline points of information. So for many of you whose students are already here, many of you, many of them have already applied for housing for next year. Those applications opened in January. Um, I do know that American campus communities, the five furnished apartment communities on the East campus will begin offering leases starting next week. Uh, and then continue into March with their current application list. Um, our housing communities, uh, the residence halls in Arroyo Vista, will begin probably make our first continuing student offer sometime in April, mid to late April. Um, so that can give you some kind of a timeline. So if your student hasn't heard from any housing uh, people by May, mid-May, late May, um, they should, you know, feel free to follow up. We'll try to provide updates on our website about what our timelines are looking like. And the other thing I would say is, as you know, the picture changes, um, you know, our hope is that we can offer as many spaces as possible. If the campus moves ahead with singles and doubles only, um, I did see that someone asked about, will ACC open at full capacity? They only have singles and double bedrooms over there, so they will open to their full effect in the fall uh, if, if it comes through that doubles are permitted, um, with the exception that some spaces need to be held aside for quarantine and isolation. And in our housing communities, it will reduce our numbers if it's singles and doubles only, but again, we'll offer as many contracts as we can. Okay. Anything else in the um, deadline space, Edgar, that you think would be helpful at this point? I don't, I don't have anything specific, just to, just to help folks understand uh, in terms of the decision making on the campus. Um, you know, uh, we work very collaboratively with our public health um, folks and the county on making some of these decisions around singles and doubles. And so uh, just so that folks know it's sort of not independently up to us how that's made, the public health of our students is a, and the campus is a, is a priority for us. Um, and so that's why sometimes uh, some things take time in terms of getting um, agreement in terms of how we manage and run the campus. So um, I just want to make sure folks knew that. Um, oh, and there was, I don't think we had addressed the question about summer housing. Connie, do you, yeah, do you know I, anything I, about I summer did, housing? I do that? see that. Um, at this point, because summer session is remote, um, we do not have a plan to house, um, to offer summer housing. Um, but I will take that, I will take that messaging back to our leadership and, um, we'll have updates on the website if anything changes. The other note I just wanted to throw in with regard to timelines is, yeah, knowing in May is great, but just so you know, we continue to make offers throughout the summer, all the way up through September as we get cancellations. Um, and then we just go to the next people on the list. So. If your student doesn't have anything in May, it doesn't mean they're not going to get an offer. 
I know people want certainty as early as possible, so, but we do still continue to make offers throughout the summer. Thanks, Connie. Liz, just one last question, and then I think we'll be wrapping up. Um, just to follow up on the well checks, there was a question about if they're also off campus, ACC, other places that you, you all do that. Yes, that is correct. And if and if they live off campus in Irvine, Newport Beach, or somewhere else around, we have great partnerships with our uh, uh, adjoining agencies um, that we work with them. But often we do go off campus to do welfare checks as well. Thank you. Well, a lot of information. Hopefully this helped everyone. Um, I want to thank um, the three panelists with me for providing all of the answers, support, and guidance to the anteater families during the session. I realize Look, we're about a month early for having this session. Right now, we're all still feeling highly uncomfortable about the pandemic, wondering when we're going to get our own vaccine, wondering how quickly the vaccines will gather. I'm an optimistic person, as you can tell. You know, I think a month from now, things are going to look a lot different for all of us. More, way more people will have the vaccine, will have a better understanding of what the transition looks like, and we'll have more um, comfort with everything that's going on. Um, so, Watch for those announcements. Watch for that as we get more clarity on what the next year is. Summer is going to be an interesting transition for all of us as we get used to moving back to um, different ways of acting. I think the bottom line is think of next year as we're all going to be back to campus in new and exciting ways, interacting with each other, doing all those things that we, we, we missed this year. Um, if you do have other questions, um, you can reach out and email parentengagement at uci.edu. Um, again, that's parent engagement at uci.edu, and they can respond and help either answer your question right away or get it to the right place. Um, I know these sessions, I was warned they end automatically, so I'm trying to time this appropriately. We have three minutes left technically, but I didn't want us to all get cut off suddenly. If anyone wants to throw any last minute comment, um, it's counting down. We got two minutes and 53 seconds now. <laughs> Well, I think with that, we're good. And I'd like to thank the panelists. I'll clap for you and be like the entire audience. <laughs> thank you all and enjoy the rest of this uh, weekend. Thank you. That was good.